وأقولوا في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Four weeks ago we started a series on Islamic finance and today inshallah ta'ala is going to be the fourth uh, gathering on this particular topic inshallah ta'ala Al-Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, a great Imam, one of the four Imams that is followed, it was said to him one day, مَا تَقُولُ What do you say فِي مَنْ جَلَسَ فِي بَيْتِهِ A person who sits in his house, or masjidihi, or he sits in the masjid. There's an individual, he stays at home, or he chooses to stay in the masjid. And he doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to make a income. He doesn't want to earn. What do you say about so and so? Waqala and then this person says, while sitting at home and sitting in the masjid, he says, La a'malu shay'an, I am not going to do anything. Hatta yatiani rizqi, my provision will come to me. It will make its way to me. What is written for me will come to me. So I'm not going to work for it and whatever Allah has written for me will come. فَقَالَ أَحْمَدُ بْنُ حَمَّلٍ الْإِمَامُ أَحْمَدْ said هَذَا رَجُلٌ This is a man جَاهِلَ الْعِلْمَ He has no Islamic knowledge. This is an individual who has no knowledge of the religion. أَمَا سَمِعَ Has this person not heard قَوْلَ النَّبِي The statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم where the Prophet said إِنَّ اللَّهَ جَعَلَ رِزْقِي تَحْتَ ذِلِّ رُمْحِ that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Allah has placed my provision under the shade of my spear. So this is Nabiullah Muhammad, a prophet from Allah. He's saying that my income, my earning, comes from effort and hard work. It is under the shade of my spear. And has this person also not heard about an animal? from the animals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the bird. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about the bird, تَغْدُوا خِمَاصًا وَتَرُوحُ بِطَانًا The bird, it leaves in the morning with an empty stomach, and it comes back with a full stomach. So it's a bird, it's an animal. No animal says, I am going to sit and everything will come to me. And you're a human, you should think more and better than the animal. So we are instructed in our religion to work, to earn. It is not an Islamic practice that a person sits, at in, sits in a masjid or a person stays at home and then says what is written for me will come to me. It goes against basic principles in the religion. Now, I don't want to go too much details into it, but what type of earning is the best? What type of earning is the best? Al-Imam Al-Bayhaqi narrated in his kitab, Shu'ab Al-Iman. On the authority of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Khayru al-Kasbi, the best earning, is kasbu yadi al-amili idha nasah. It is the earning of a person who physically worked for it, used his hands. Yadu al-amili is the hands of a person doing something with your hands. The Prophet then said, idha nasaha, if he's sincere and honest and truthful in what he's doing. 
We know in the Arabic language the word khayr is a superlative. It, you, it has in it an alif before it, which is akhyar. Ala sirati af'al. The greatest form of earning is that which a person earns with his own hands, ida nasaha if he's truthful. And we're going to see, inshallah ta'ala, some of that nasiha that a person can do. Brothers and sisters, did you know that your rizq, it's, it's working towards you and it's coming to you, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. The Prophet told us in a hadith, Ibn Hibban narrated in hadith Abi Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the messenger sent, إِنَّ الرِّزْقَ لَيَطْلُبُ الْعَبْدَ The rizq looks for a person كَمَا يَطْلُبُهُ أَجَلُهُ The way that death is looking for you. Rizq is looking for you in that way. Your provision, your rizq is looking for you, wants to get hold of you. The way that your ajal, your time, of leaving and departing from this world is coming to an end, the same way is your rizq. Rather, there's another wording where the messenger said, That rather your rizq, it's most looking for you than your ajal is looking for you. So if you are working and you're trying to make an income know that the effort that you're exerting in trying to get this rizq is not as great as the rizq itself trying to look for you. And one of the greatest statements Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah who said was, if Allah Azza wa Jalla provided for you in the womb of your mother without you exerting any effort, you never worked for it. In the womb of your mother, Allah Azza wa Jalla is providing for you and He's giving to you. Would He then forsake you when you've come out and you're working for it? Yeah? No. Inshallah, Allah won't. But there's something that is needed from us. If the risk is going to come our way and it's going to come to us, there is something required from us. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he expanded on it in another hadith that an Imam al-Bayhaqi narrated. And also in Shu'ab al-Iman, on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah considered and graded this hadith to be sahih. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تستبطئ الرزق Do not consider and think to yourself that your rizq is going to be delayed. And say, ah, oh, it's not going to come my way. I don't think I'm going to get what I, what my rizq. Don't do that. فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ تَكُنْ عَبْدٌ There is not a slave that exists who lives in this world. He will not die. لَيَمُوتَ حَتَّى يَبْلُغَهُ He will not die until the risk that was written for you will come your way. That which Allah writes for you will come your way. حَتَّى يَبْلُغَهُ آخِرُ رِزْقٍ هُوَ لَهُ until the last rizq that was written for you, the last meal that was written for you, until you take that in, you won't die. Fattakullaha. Then be conscious of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and perfect the manner and the way that you try to look for your rizq. And the Prophet then explained it more and he said, Akhdul halali wa tarkul harami. Take that which is halal and stay away from that which is haram. Don't consider your risk something that's going to delay. It's going to come your way. Your risk is written for you. The way that the day you're going to die, it was written for you. The same is that your risk was written for you. Have you not seen a person who went to a shop, he bought himself a meal, he wanted to eat it, and then someone else ended up eating it? Does that not indicate and show to you that it wasn't written for you? This risk wasn't yours. Who was it? You bought it for someone else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He writes your risk in another country. 
In the morning you have breakfast in this country and in the evening you are in another country. That's where your rizq was written for you. Our whole entire life is governed like that. Everything that is written for you is going to come your way. So perfect what you're looking for. Look for it in a halal way. This rizq, some of the salaf, they said it's going to come to you either in a halal or haram way. You choose which way you're going to get it. You could get the same risk in a halal way and you can get that same risk in a what? In a haram way. So the Prophet said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ Have taqwa of Allah in your risk. وَأَجْمِلُوا فِي الطَّلَبِ And perfect in the way that you try to attain this risk. أَخْذُوا الْحَلَالِ وَتَرْكُوا الْحَرَامِ Take that which is halal and leave off that which is haram. The taqi, the slave who is pious, who follows the statement of the Prophet here, every transaction in his life, he breaks it into three. Every business, every transaction, any earning is one of three. It is either halalun bayyinun, click a halal. Or haramun bayyinun, or click at haram. First one is halal, clear to him. He knows it, that this is halal. Or it's clear cut haram. The clear cut halal, he comes with it. Are we all together? He comes with the clear cut halal. And the clear cut haram, he stays away from it. And between those two are things which is ambiguous to some people. The slave who is pious stays away from it. وَلِذَٰلِكَ the salaf they said about great imams before them تَرَكُوا كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الْحَلَالِ مَخَافَةَ الْحَرَامِ They left off so many things that were halal fear of the haram. It wasn't, it wasn't the doubtful issues. Halal things they left off. Makafat al harami fear of the haram. And that's why they were the people of taqwa and people of piety. So if anything you know, a business, a transaction that you're in, and there's a question mark that's put on it, don't place your religion, your deen, the earning that you're going to bring home, the risk that you're going to bring to your children and your family, don't make it something doubtful. You're trying to bring out a new generation of people. Leave it off. Abd ibn Humayd and Abu Ya'la both narrated you on the authority of Abu Huraira. رضي الله تعالى عنه He said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said من طلب الدنيا حلالا A person is seeking this dunya through halal. So he's looking for what? Halal. That's one. Isti'fafan anil mas'ala. The reason why he's looking for halal is that he doesn't want to ask the people. Isti'fafan anil mas'ala. He doesn't want to ask anyone. One. So no, number two. He's looking for halal and he doesn't want to ask anyone. He wants to have ifa, chast, from having to need anyone. Wata'atufan ala jarihi. And he wants to be kind to his neighbors, those around him wants to care for them. He wants to be the upper hand, the one that gives. وَسَعْيًا عَلَىٰ عِيَالِهِ And he wants to work for his children. He wants to provide for his children and what they need and fulfill their need. جَاءَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ That person will come the day of judgment. And another wording he says, لَقِيَ اللَّهَ He will meet Allah. No, he will just come the day of judgment. This person will meet Allah. وَوَجْهُ مِثْلُ and this person's face is like al qamar al laylat al badri a full moon glowing in the day of judgment man talaba this person looks for the dunya halal istighfafan an al mas'ala doesn't want to ask anyone wa ta'attufan ala jari and he wants to aid and help those neighboring and around him wa sa'yan ala iyalihi and he wants to earn for his children and his offspring, he wants to bring for them what they need. 
and fulfill their need. That person's going to meet Allah the day of judgment. And his face is like the full moon, the way it's glowing that day. The second person is what? The person who looks to gain this dunya, halal, not haram, halal. But what is he doing? Mufakhiran, boasting and bragging. He's going out there, he's making halal income. But he wants to boast and brag. He wants to put this on social media. Huh? He wants to go on YouTube and show people, look at the cars that are parked in front of my villa. Uh, how much? On Monday I drive this Bentley. On Tuesday I drive this Rolls Royce. And, and he names the cars. And then he goes into his crib, his house, and he shows the people what he's got. And he says, this is just one of my properties. He wants to brag and boast. He just wants to increase. He wants to show the people. Huh? He wants to what? He wants to show off to the people. Laqi Allah, that person will come the day of judgment. And meet Allah Azza wa Jalla. Wa alayhi ghadban. And Allah is angry with him. A person will meet Allah the day of judgment and Allah is angry with him. Brothers, pay attention. This person's look, he's earning his halal. It's not haram. So the thing that he came with is halal. But the means he took was what? A bad intention. Mufakhiran, mukathiran, muraiyan. So what we learn from this hadith is not that you only try to attain halal income. But the way that you try to attain it is also what? In a good manner. You what? It's a good manner. I mean, if Allah has bestowed His blessings on you, and Allah has given you money, that doesn't mean you can't. The blessings of Allah cannot be seen from you. You can drive a nice car, no problem. But we're not with the condition that you want to show off to people. Not with the condition that you want to uh, boast and brag to those People who haven't got it. And today, well, in Asaf is Shadid, one of the sad realities today is that is what's happening in social media. People, this hadith, by the way, is talking about someone who's rich and has it and is wealthy. Well, in Asaf is Shadid, the wad and the situation that we're in today is it's people, we know that they don't have nothing. They have nothing. They borrow everything, they stay in a hotel. And they record those moments. They even sometimes ask someone else if they can sit in their car and they take a picture with another person's car to give the impression to others that this is what? It's their belonging. We need to abstain and stay away from that. We don't want to meet Allah the day of judgment and He's angry with us subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu told us in a hadith Ibn Majah narrated on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar. قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said أَتَّاجِرُ الْأَمِينُ the truthful, honest, Muslim merchant أَتَّاجِرُ الْأَمِينُ الصَّدُوقُ الْمُسْلِمُ أَتَّاجِرُ is a merchant الأمين is trustworthy الصَّدُوق means he's honest الْمُسْلِمُ he's a Muslim four characteristics he is where the day of judgment. He's with the martyrs, the day of judgment. He's with who? The martyrs, the day of judgment. So this shows us the station of the one who buys and sells. He's truthful in his buying and his selling. He doesn't lie about his merchant. He doesn't lie about his product. If his product doesn't have the quality that the buyer wants, he says it to him, I'm sorry, my one is not as good as the one you're looking for. I will encourage you, if you could go to so-and-so, who's not far from here, he has a better product than I do. This is barakah and good. And this is where Allah is going to bring khair for your, your, your risk and what you have. Truthfulness and honesty. At-tajiru al-aminu. The Muslim merchant who is truthful, who is honest, you're with the martyrs the day of judgment.
You have a high station, the Day of Judgment. Ahmed ibn Hamdan rahimahullah and Abu Ya'la and Al-Tabarani were all narrated on the authority of Amr ibn al-As, the companion. He said, Ba'atha ilayya al sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger sent for me. The messenger sent for me. He told someone to go and bring me. And then so, they went and brought Amr ibn al-As to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looked at Amr ibn al-As. And Amr ibn al-As, he said, he looked at me and he looked up and down at me. And then he said to him, خُذْ عَلَيْكَ ثِيَابَكَ وَصِلَاحَكَ Go put your clothing on and go get your weapons, your armory. Go get your weaponry, your armory, and go put your clothing on. ثُمَّ آتِنِي And then come to me. أَمَا ثُمَّ آتِنِي Come to me. He said, I did. I went, I put my armory on. I got ready. فَأَتَيْتُ I came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فقال, the Prophet said to him, إِنِّي أُرِيدُ أَنْ أَبْعَثَكَ I want to send you to one of the expeditions, one of the battles. I want to send you to one of the battles. And I want to make you the chief of that battle. I want to make you in charge of the army. فَيُسَلِّمُكَ اللَّهُ And Allah will bring you back safely. Nothing's going to happen to you. The Prophet's talking from Revelation. Amr ibn al-As, I want to send you with an army and I want to make you the, the commander of the army and you will come back safe. Nothing will happen to you, inshallah. وَيُغَنِّمُكَ اللَّهُ And Allah is going to give you ghanima from this. وَأَرْغَبُ لَكَ مِنَ الْمَالِ And I want for you some wealth. After the ghanima comes, there is a portion I want for you. Prophet is telling them, all of this is going to happen for you, Amr ibn Aas. وَأَرْغَبُ لَكَ مِنَ الْمَالِ رَغْبَةً صَالِحًا I hope for you a portion of wealth for you. Good wealth for you. فَقُلْتُ عَبْدُ Amr ibn Aas, Amr ibn Aas said, I said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, or Messenger of Allah, مَا أَسْلَمْتُ مِنْ أَجِلِ الْمَالِ I did not take Islam because of money. Because he thought that the Prophet thought that he took Islam because he wants the ghanima, and he wants money. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I did not take Islam for what? For wealth. Then the Prophet said to him, No, he then said, Amr ibn Aslan said, Bal salam tu fil Islami. Rather, I took Islam because I want this religion. I believe in it. I want to be a Muslim. And I want to be with you, O oh, Messenger of Allah. فقال رسول الله the messenger the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم they said يا عمر عمر نعم المال الصالح للمرء الصالح نعم blessed is a good wealth for a righteous man good wealth is uh, wealth which is good is a blessing for a righteous person well, some of the scholars, they took from this that wealth is only cursed and belittled when it's not salih. But if money is earned in the right way, it's praiseworthy. Because the Prophet said, I want it for you. And if something was very low and pathetic and had no value, the Prophet would not have wanted it for the, for the noble companion Amr ibn al-As. Like, pay attention to this. نِعْمَ الْمَالُ الصَّالِحِ لِلْمَرْءِ الصَّالِحِ The money that is noble and that was taken in a noble way is good for a righteous person. So we have to make sure that our wealth is salih, good wealth that we have. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in a hadith as Tirmidhi narrated in hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet said من أكل طيبا anyone who eats good income halal earned money وعمل في سنة and he acts in accordance to the sunnah pay attention to this 
Man akala tayyiban. Someone who eats halal earned income. Halal food. Halal income. Wa amila fi sunnatin and acts in accordance to the sunnah. Wa amina nasu bawaiqah. And the people find safety from you. You don't harm anyone. Your speech and your actions don't harm or hurt anyone. Dakhal al jannah. You will enter jannah. Pay attention to this, brothers. This hadith is saying to us, "Man akala tayyiban." Anyone who eats that which is halal, wa amila fi sunnatin and act in accordance to the sunnah, wa amin al nasu bawaika, and the people find safety from you. You don't harm anyone. You don't cause anyone trouble in the market when you're buying or you're selling. You're not causing problems to your your customers. You're not causing any trouble to your colleagues at work. None of that. دخل الجنة. You will enter Jannah. فقال رجل a man stood up and he said, يا رسول الله أو messenger of Allah, إن هذا اليوم في الناس لكثير. This today is so much in the people. These characteristics that you're mentioning, it is too much right now. Everyone's like that. Abu Bakr and Umar, Uthman and Ali, all the companions. That's how they like. They eat halal. They act in accordance to the sunnah, and the people find safety from them. Then the Prophet said, وَسَيَكُونُ فِي قُرُونٍ بَعْدِي This is going to be in generations to come. It's not now. It's for people who are going to come. So what I did is I researched, when can we say it actually started when this drifted away? Uh, when this started to change. So I came across a statement by the great Imam Yunus ibn Ubayd. And Yunus ibn Ubayd, he's different on when he died. Some scholars, they said he died 139 and some said he died 140. That's it. 139, 140. Yunus ibn Ubayd. Yunus ibn Ubayd, look what he said. He said, min shay'aini. There is nothing more rare than two things. Hey, what are the two things? Dirhamun tayyibun. A dirham that came through halal income. Warajulun ya'malu ala sunnatin. And a man that is acting in accordance to the sunnah. What year was he? 140 or 139. Dispute on when he died. This time of his, he's saying, it is rare, he said, to find dirhamun tayyibun, a dirham that is clean, halal earned income. وَرَجُلٌ أَيْمَانٌ يَعْمَلُ عَلَى سُنَّةِ الْأَيْمَانِ that is working in accordance to the sunnah. Those two are very rare to find today. Two rare characteristics. Halal, it's become very hard. Someone who's actually working and making halal income today is nadir. Are we all together? What is it? Nadir, rare. And the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Sayati ala ummati. The Prophet said, It will come to my ummah one day that the person will not be safe from riba. If he doesn't take from it, the smoke of it will come his way. If he doesn't come to you, if you don't take from it directly, indirectly will come to you. Other means and other ways. One of the statements that was transmitted from the Luqman al-Hakim is when he said, he said, Ya Bunayya, my son. He said, Istaghni bil kasbil halali anil faqri. I love this statement and it's a very powerful statement. He was talking to his son and he was advising him. He said, My son, suffice yourself with halal income. Ya Bunayya, my son. Istaghni bil kasbil halali anil faqri. Earn halal income to get yourself away from poverty. Suffice yourself with halal income 
to get yourself away from poverty. فَإِنَّهُ مَفْتَقَرَ أَحَدٌ قَطٌ إِلَّا أَصَابَهُ ثَلَاثُ خِصَالٍ There is not a person who is afflicted with poverty except that he is stricken by three characteristics. He undergoes three traits. Anyone who's put through what? Poverty. What is the first one? رِقَّةٌ فِي دِينِهِ His religion becomes weak. Uh, the person starts saying, oh, I think I should take this job. I know it consists haram, I know there's khamr in it, I know what can I do. <sighs> Poverty, not having a job. He went to three interviews. They said, your beard is too long. You have to shave it. You're good, you passed everything, we like you. Your salary is going to start from 30,000 dirhams. Hey, you can start next week. Just do something with your bid. Huh? Just work on your bid. Shave it. His religion starts to move. True or false? His religion becomes weak. And the, he undergoes weakness in his thoughts. Can't think clearly. Poverty takes away from you thinking straight. Your, women, your wife and your children, you're looking at them, they're hungry, the rent is due, this is due. And sometimes you even lose your dignity. Three things. Your religion becomes weak and feeble. And your aql, you can't think straight. You were the wise man, the clever man. And the third one is, وَذِهَابُ مُرُؤَتِهِ You lose your dignity. And your honor, it goes. Even if nothing else happens, but you just lose your honor in your own household. Your partner says, you can't even provide for us. So you lose your honor, your own dignity. That's the time when Iman is greatly needed. صح? So how do you block yourself from that poverty? He said, Ya Bunaya, istagni bil kasbi al halali. Suffice yourself with the halal brothers. Ibrahim ibn Adham, they said he was from a rich family. His father, his granddad, and his family were leaders. Ibrahim ibn Adham, from a rich family. He's the man I told you, he said, him and Abu Yusuf went together. And they went to the edge of the ocean. Ibrahim ibn Adham and Abu Yusuf. They went to the edge of the ocean with two dry breads. And they started to dip it in the ocean. And then when it got soft, they ate it. And Ibrahim ibn Adham said to Abu Yusuf, لو علم الملوك وأبناء الملوك ما نحن فيه من النعيم والسرور If the kings and the children of the kings were to know the blessing that you and I have, if they knew the kings, and the children of the kings were to know the happiness me and you are going through right now, this moment, and the happiness that we have, if they knew about it, they would come out of their palaces, they would brought out their swords, and they would try to take that away from us. If they only knew what we have. His father was a leader, Ibrahim ibn Adham. His granddad was a leader. He's from a family of leadership, wealth, and money. And they said he was Mina Zuhad. He walked away from all of that. Ibrahim ibn Adam. When well, the scholars, they say a Zahid, an aesthetic person, is the one that he can grab the dunya if he wants to. He can. His money is there, everything is there. He's choosing not to go that direction. That person is a Zahid. Like a Zahid isn't a person who's struggling in life and then he goes, you know what? I'll just be aesthetic. The ulama, they don't call that a zahid. Because he has no other option. And he has no other choice. Doesn't mean that he won't get rewarded for it. His patience and his endurance, of course he gets rewarded for it. But the word zuhd, but the word zuhd is used for the one who the dunya comes his way, has the ability to take it and he chooses not to. Anyways, Ibrahim ibn Adam, he said, he said a very powerful statement. 
I love this statement. He said, Tayyib, mad, tayyib perfect mad'amaka, perfect your income and your earning. وَمَا عَلَيْكَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ أَلَّا تَصُومَ النَّهَارَ وَلَا تَقُومَ اللَّيْلِ And after that, your qiyamu al-layl and your fasting, leave it to Allah. Allah will make it all happen for you. Allahu Akbar. He said, طَيِّبْ مَطْعَمَكَ Perfect your income and your earnings. وَمَا عَلَيْكَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ And it's really not upon you. Meaning, he means here, as the scholars explained it, all of those Allah makes it easy for you. The reason why you're unable to fast, the reason why you're unable to pray Qiyamul Layl is because of what you're eating and the income that you're making. If you eat, he's saying, halal, the rest is, it's going to go in line. Huh? It's going to be, it's going to all happen. It's a domino effect. It's all going to go down. But what do you need to come with first? Huh? You just have to come with Perfect your earning. But in that case, some people they come to a shaykh and they say, Shaykh, Allah Ali, beg Allah for me. I have something, make dua for me. Perfect your earnings and your dua is accepted. Your dua is what? Accepted, inshaAllah. Al Imam al Bukhari, and I'm going to conclude with this. Bukhari, rahimahullah, he said, in Hadith Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, and Ukala Kala Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Menta saddaka bi adli tamratin. Anyone who gives out a date worth of sadaqa. Min kasbin tayyibin from halal income. Someone gives out a date of sadaqah, but from halal income. He worked hard, halal income, he gave small as a date. وَلَا يَسْعَدُ إِلَى اللَّهِ And nothing goes up to Allah, إِلَّا الطَّيِّبُ Except that which is halal. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتَقَبَّلُهَا That small date, that small sadaqah that you gave, Allah will take it up. It will be lifted to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will accept it from you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is he going to accept it with you, from you? The hadith says, يَتَقَبَّلُهَا بِيَمِينِهِ Allah will accept it with his right hand. And in aqeedah ahl sunnah is, Allah has a hand, وَكِلْتَ يَدَيْهِ يَمِينٌ We believe both hands of Allah are right. And they are the way that befits his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ يُرَبِّيهَا Allah nurtures your sadaqah for you. The hadith is saying this. Bukhari is narrating this hadith in Sahih. Thumma yurabbiha, Allah nurtures that one date that you gave. Allah nurtures it for you. Thumma yurabbiha li sahibiha, kama yurabbi ahadukum fuluwahu. The way that one of you nurtures his baby horse. Uh, do you call it a baby horse? What's it got a name? A pony, a pony, a pony. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the way that you nurture and take care of your pony Allah Azza wa Jalla until the pony grows Allah Azza wa Jalla will nurture that small date of yours and make it grow and grow until what? until it becomes as big as the mountain of Uhud and we know the famous hadith رَجُلٌ يُطِيلُ السَّفَرْ أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرْ يَمُدُّ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ يَا رَبْ يَا رَبْ وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامٌ وَمَشْرَبُهُ حَرَامٌ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامٌ وَوُضِيَ بِالْحَرَامِ فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِذَلِكَ The man who traveled in the middle of the desert, he raised his hand and he said, يَا رَبْ يَا رَبْ His food was haram. What he drank was haram. He was nurtured upon haram. The hadith says, فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِذَلِكَ How can this man's dua be accepted? He eats haram, he drinks haram, he's wearing haram. How does he accept, how does, how does he expect to raise hands that he has been doing haram transaction with? How does he expect Allah wa ta'ala to accept his dua? فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِذَلِكَ 
How can this man's dua be accepted? In other words, it won't be accepted. So we have to make sure our mal and our wealth is halal. Inshallah ta'ala, next week we're going to start talking about principles of how to identify, principles of how to identify the halal income, inshallah ta'ala. A lot of you guys have many questions that you're asking and I'm going to be speaking about them, such as Bitcoin and other things like that. We will be speaking about that in details, inshallah. But there is things I want you guys to understand prior to that. So once we agree on all of that, when these rulings and things come together, you'll understand it better and it will make more sense for, to you, inshallah ta'ala. So we will talk about many questions that people are asking. Bi'idhnillahi al-kareem. Anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, a shaytan, and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka atubu ilayhi.